understanding why stockouts happen, I think, is the, the first critical step to, to looking at your processes, your business processes, and, and your system settings um, so that you can Im improve the situation at your business. So uh, as a company, Thrive's been around since 2001. Um, we've talked to literally thousands of, of distribution companies um, over the last 19 years. Um, and we've analyzed data at hundreds of, of distribution companies. So that's kind of where this data is coming from. Um, and so I can, I can share some of our, our findings with you. So the first thing that we found is that um, in regards to lost sales, um, over 90% of distributors don't really know what their lost sales are. And it's, and it's you, know, I'm, you know, I'm sure all of you guys can, can identify with this. It's, it's, it's a difficult thing to track. Um, so, you know, some people do it partially where maybe you have a code um, in your system and then people at the branch or, and folks that take the orders um, can then, you know, mark as a code when, when somebody, when a client wants something, wants to buy something and you guys don't have it in stock, but it's, it's you know, not 100% accurate. So uh, fortunately, one of the things that, that Thrive provides in our functionality is an ability to estimate the lost sales. And the way that we do it is um, for all of, our, all of our clients, we, um, we know when an item has zero on hand, um, and we know when there is a forecast in place, um, you know, we keep a forecast in place for every day. So we use that as an estimate of the, of what you would have sold that day. And then we archive that data and compile it. Um, and then we actually dollarize it so that, and I'll show you in the, in the system, um, but it's, we're actually able to estimate what the, what the lost sales are. So, you know, what we have found over the years is that distributors lose between 3% and 10% of your annual revenues um, due to out-of-stocks. So, um, you know, and, and of course, it, it depends on your lead times, too. I mean, it, uh, for wholesalers with shorter lead times, you know, if your lead time ranges between a couple days and, you know, a couple weeks, um, you know, you're going to be more around five or six percent of annual revenues lost due to stockouts. Um, those of you with imports, you know, master distributors um, sourcing from overseas um, with lead times 90 days or longer, you're going to be on the high end. You know, so just because obviously it takes so long for the product to get in, um, if you're out, you're out for quite a while. So, you know. If you think about the average, you know, being around six percent, um, then if you if you dollarize that, you know, if you're a hundred million dollar distributor, um, then you're typically losing about six million dollars a year uh, in sales due to not having product in, in stock at the right place when the when the customer wants it. So you know, there are some outliers to that, and that and what I'm talking about here is companies that are relying on traditional means you know your your Infor system you know whatever uh, you know whether you're using sx or fax or a plus you know whatever um erp system you're using um and maybe supplementing it with spreadsheets but you're not using a, an inventory optimization system like thrives so those those are where these percentages come in um uh you know there are some companies that aren't using an inventory optimization system and are on the low range you know they might be you know two, three, four percent of annual revenues um, in lost sales. But those are companies that um, are very service oriented, what I, what I would call service oriented. So they stock more than average, um, you know, so they might only have one or two turns a year um, and they're stocking, you know, 30 percent, 50 percent more inventory in dollars than or, or even more than that. Um, than a, you know a typical distributor, so they can have less um, lost sales, but um, you know it, it they, that comes at a price, right? So there's there's certainly a cost to um, you know warehouse all of that stuff, you know to keep it in 
you know, if you don't have warehouses, then you're going to have large branches. You got to have the people to to um, um, buy it and to um, uh, put it away and drive it around. So it it obviously comes at a at a pretty big cost. So the good news is that there are a finite number of reasons why you stock out. You know, it's not just some undefinable, um, you know, a bunch of scenarios that can happen. There are uh, in fact, really um, distinct reasons why you might stock out. And I'm not going to go too much into depth on, on each one. Um, but uh, what I will say is that um, Gloria had mentioned you can type your questions into, um, you know, what they call the question bank, the, the part that says questions on your, your dialog box. Um, but for me, it doesn't bother me at all. If you, as we go through these, I'm going to actually go back and forth between our our system too, just to show you some examples of how we address these. Um, so if there are any questions while I'm presenting, feel free to, um, um, you know, type of, you know, type your questions in the question bank or, or in the chat box. Um, so the first reason, um, you know, and these aren't numbered in any particular, re, uh, you know, order. So these aren't in, you know, the number one reason. This is just uh, the first of eight reasons. Um, so the first reason for stockouts is because the, the PO or transfer order was not cut um, or it was cut too late. And here we're talking about your regularly moving items. You know, we're going to talk about lumpy demand and, and different reasons later, but um, this, these are items that, that sell pretty regularly. Um, and for whatever reason, um, you know, the, the order wasn't cut or it wasn't cut on time. Um, and one of the reasons for this is because the, the usage number in, your, in the N4 system um, was too low. And so, you know, it didn't trigger a buy or transfer in time. Um, another reason is because you might have, the buyer might have decided to wait um, because you, you weren't at, you know, for the overall vendor, you weren't at enough to, to get free freight. Um, so you might have waited till the following week, and, and by that time, you know, you had at least one item that was that was going out of stock. Um, and then the third reason is, um, you know, it's just you guys stock thousands, tens of thousands of, of SKUs, so the buyers can really only manually review so many. I mean, it, you know, even if they go through every single line um, that that comes out on the on the suggested order, there's probably other items that that maybe should have been ordered. Um, that, that were missed. So let me, I'm going to jump out of here for a second and then let me, um, uh, let me show you our system. So Thrive is a, is a browser based system that, you know, as you can see, so I've logged in here. Um, and then, uh, you know, I'm just going to show you what, you know, some, some things that Thrive does to help, uh, with this, help prevent this scenario. So one of the things that we do is, as I mentioned before, is that we do, um, we do estimate lost sales. So let's, let's take a look at that. So I'm going to bring up, you know, all of my suggested orders for today in the Thrive system. And then you can see out here to the right, these lost sales, lost margin columns, right? So what we're doing is, and I, and I can sort by these. So remember what we're doing is that we're, um, um, looking at your items where there's zero on hand, or it could be that you have some inventory and on hand, but because of the lead time, you know, maybe let's say you've got an item that sells, you know, 10 a day um, at this particular branch and you've got, you know, 12, um, but the lead time is a week, right? So then Thrive is also looking at that too. So, you know, within a day or two, most likely you're going to be out um, uh, you know, of that item there. And then, so then we take the four days, three or four days that are left, um, times the 10 that you would, uh, would have, you know, we're estimating that you would have sold times the average sale price. And so that's how we're coming up, you know, with your lost sales dollars. So, um, you know, why is, why is this helpful? Well, you know, a typical scenario, um, for everybody is that the buyers are looking at the suggested quantities and you you know what how much you need to you know for freight um, from those particular vendors and and maybe you know maybe the freight is a thousand dollars 
and the suggested order quantity is 500. So, you know, every day, you know, the, you know each, all of you buyers are having to make this decision, right? Whether you should go ahead and, and push that order up, place the order today, um, or could you wait till next week, you know, or until the next time that you were going to place the buy. So now, if we're telling you that if you don't place that buy today, you know, you could lose uh, $3,000, you know, the company could lose $3,000 in sales, uh, you know, maybe $1,000 in margin. So now that gives you better intelligence um, on, on whether you should do this. You know, you might want to go ahead and, and place that order today. So let's go ahead and, and click into a, uh, into a vendor here, into a suggested order. Um, so in Thrive, then, you know, we can also see, um, uh, you know, so this is a, this is a vendor um, at, a, at a particular branch uh, or stocking location. So here's the various items um, that, is, that Thrive is suggesting uh, to order today. Um, and then I, once again, I can see my lost sales, my estimated lost sales by item. You know, so once again, I could sort on that. And then you know, I can see by item what it's looking like. So, you know, let's take a look at, um, uh, you know, let's take a look at one of these items and, and see what, uh, um, you know, what we're dealing with here. So, you know, for this particular item, we do have 10 on hand, so we're not out yet, right? But um, the lead time on this is 14 days, so it is a couple weeks, right? So even if we cut the, and we, we do have some open orders that are coming in. Um, so we do have 12 units that are coming in, you know, next week. Um, so in the meanwhile, you know, uh, we are going to be out and there are going to be some lost sales there, right? So um, Thrive is recommending that we place an order today for seven. You know, it'll come in a couple of weeks and then, you know, with that along with the open order that's coming in, then we'll get us back into, uh, um, into a good place there. So that's kind of, you know, just a, a, a little bit of, of how Thrive does it. So the second reason why you stock out is that a large unexpected sale to a customer um, wipes you out. You know, so at a particular branch, um, somebody came in and bought all the stock, right? So you know, this is obviously a little bit trickier um, to prevent from happening. Um, you know, if your if your buying system uh, you know, I don't know if, what flavor you guys are using, if you're using SX or FAX or A plus or, um, you know, which of the M4 systems you're using. But, um, you know, if it's based on a moving average, then that, that usage number is always going to lag, right? So let me show you how we kind of help you with this. Um, I'm going to go back into the software. I'm going to go out to what we call the status list. Um, and so what I've got this filtered for now is, uh, by ABC code. So I'm just going to look at the, the A items. Um, so on the right hand side here are, are various alerts, um, at the SKU level. So I'm going to, I'm going to select these surging items. Um, and so, you know, we'll just take this first one. So this is one SKU at, at one stocking location. And I can see, you know, Thrive's kind of alerted me that this thing is surging. So I can see these big spikes here, right? Um, so, you know, I could click in there and see, see who, who's buying this stuff. So it looks like this Oakwood construction is, is um, the big hitter for this month. Um, you know, 1,300 units. Yeah, so 1,300 of the 1,481 units we sold here in August were bought by that Oakwood Construction. I'm going to click back on the June, and then once again, Oakwood Construction, you know, Westchester Villas, Bethany Villas. So it looks like this is some big project work, um, and it's you know it's it's you know they're buying a ton of this this particular item. 
So this is the type of thing that you know Thrive would alert you to, and um, and then this is the kind of thing where you can check with that branch manager, um, and then just see if this is you know how long this project is supposed to go, um, and uh, you know uh, you can that'll help you determine you know if if uh, if this forecast is good. Or not. Um, if it's already done, then then we need to go back and revert back to our old levels, um, and we would want to tell Thrive, you know, not to not to include these uh, numbers anymore. These Oakwood, you know, Oakwood construction numbers. Um, but if it is going to last, you know, into into this year, then we would want to, in fact, include those numbers and then and then buy to those. Um, so that's that's how we do it um, in the Thrive system. So the third reason um, is your new items, right? So you can have a new item and it just starts to, to take off and then you, you didn't buy enough. Um, you didn't have enough in place. So once again, uh, um, uh, a purchasing system that's based on a moving average is always gonna lag, right? It's always looking backwards and averaging what you've sold in the past. Um, so it can, it can be too late in reacting to items as they as they start to, you know start to take off, so let's go back into Thrive. I'm going to go to the status list here. Again, um, again we're looking at A items, and then let's look at some new items. So I'm going to pick this pressure switch here, um, and so you can see that you know this item we've only had this item. Um, you know, when the way the Thrive works, it's a bolt-on to your N4 system. So there's interfaces in place. Um, so we're getting, you know, your item master and we're getting your sales transactions. So, you know, that's where all this data is coming from. Um, and so we also get a create date um, if you have those, uh, if you have that in your system. So we know that this item's only been around four months um, and it's selling very well. Um, and so, you know, um, I'd want to make sure that what Thrive is forecasting here um, seems reasonable um, to you. You know, um, the you know the other thing that Thrive does um, is it generates reporting. So you know, one of the reports is going to be on new items, and so it can it can give alerts to the buyers as to which new items um, are just you know selling a, a, a ton. So we know that these months, I mean, these items have only been around a month, but you know, this is what they're, they're selling, right? So it, it alerts them that, you know, so hopefully you get a little bit of a quicker um, heads up that, uh, on new items as they're taking off. Um, so that's kind of how we help to address that, that particular uh, stock out reason. Okay, number four is is volatile sales patterns. So, you know, in the real world, as as you guys know um, better than me, I mean, your items don't sell the same amount every month, right? Um, if that were the case, then inventory would be really easy to manage, and and uh, and I would have to find another line of work. So, but the fact of the matter is that you know most of your items sell very unpredictably throughout the year. Um, you know, so. You know how do you, that's that's the challenge, right? So let's let's look back and and thrive, um, and I'll just show you some examples of of how we can help with this. So once again, we'll go back to the status list, um, and then I'm going to look at some um, items with what we call a high COV, um, which is uh, the stands for the coefficient of variation. So it's just the error metric. Um, that tells us items that are very lumpy. Um, so, and I'm going to pick this um, uh, this filter here, and we'll take a look at this. So, you know, you guys probably all have a, a, a lot of items that where their sales look like this. So now we're looking at what we call the forecast detail screen. So this is one skew at one branch. Um, the yellow rows here are your sales history. Um, over the last three years, and then this this um, shaded line here is the the forecast thrives forecast. So you can see this is this is a lumpy item. This is this is an, an item that's going to be difficult for for any forecasting system to forecast. 
Um, so a couple of things here are that, um, you know, we might want to look and see, you know, who's buying it. Um, you know, so we might want to look at customer breadth and, and see how many customers are buying this. So the type of thing this, you know, that we do that Thrive does is Thrive can analyze um, how many customers are buying this item, um, what the average sale is, is does this uh, item sell in, in boxes? Um, you know, here it seems like maybe not, um, you know, maybe, you know, this increment of twos maybe, but um, sometimes we might see where it sells in, you know, boxes of five or 10 or 12, something like that. And so um, what we do is we create policies um, that analyze the sales of, of these types of items and then allows you to set policies. So you can say, you know, always stock a box of this item um, because it's, you know, as we already mentioned, you know, these are very difficult to predict. So we would just stock a, um, set a stocking policy, um, an inventory policy that analyzes the data, analyzes how many customers bought it, analyzes the average sale. You can say stock the average sale amount um, you can say if this particular customer bought it, you know, one of our top 10, top 20 accounts, um, then we always have to keep it in stock. You know, even if we only have two or three hits a year, um, we're going to want to stock it for that customer. So those are just examples of some of the, the policies that we do to help you to address these um, items with these, this type of, of sale, um, sales history. Um, let, let me stop now too and then just see we're um, halfway through the are there any questions at this point once again um, feel free to um, just type those in um, to the to the question bank and then um, and then Gloria can can stop me and, and and we can answer questions as we're going through this there are not any questions at present nor any hands raised in the attendee list okay thank you Gloria all right, so we'll keep going then. So number five is that um, is seasonality. Um, so our experience is that most companies have at least some items that have seasonal demand. Um, we work with a lot of seasonal businesses, so we deal a lot in HVAC, um, you know, building supplies, um, you know, so obviously those um, pools, you know, pool supplies. Um, so obviously their stuff is very seasonal. Um, but we've really found um, seasonality in, in all of our clients. Um, you know, we have clients that do wine and spirits. Um, and so, you know, eggnog, um, scotch um, is a typical Christmas present, holiday present. So, um, you know, it's still seasonality there. Um, and so, you know, what, what you need to, to have is a way to automatically identify which items are seasonal. Um, and then predict their seasonal patterns um, in your forecast. So, you know, so let me let me jump back into our system and I'll, I'll kind of show you how we do that. So, um, I'm gonna pick this flame sensor here. because this one's a pretty good example. So once again, we're back on that forecast detail page. So this is one SKU at, at one branch. Um, and then you can see, here's the sales history, obviously very seasonal. So we don't really sell it too much in the warm months, um, but as, as we start to go into you know, end of summer, cooler months, then, um, then it, we, we sell the heck out of this. So. Um, very seasonal, and then you can see how Thrive is is um, identifying this as a seasonal pattern, and then um, predicting the, the seasonality going forward. So, um, and then let's look at how Thrive, um, you know, so Thrive can forecast for you, and then and then that data can go back to to your Infor system. Um, Thrive can do optimal min maxes for you that can go back into your Infor system. Thrive can also do suggested POs. Um, so there's a, a variety of ways that we interface with the, the Infor systems. Um, if we're doing the suggested POs, then we'll actually run replenishment 
So this is replenishment for that same SKU, same location. So now let's look at um, how Thrive is, is buying for this. So this demo data is at the beginning of the year. Um, so this is looking forward. Um, so we're actually creating a plan, um, inventory plan for the next 52 weeks. So, um, you know, you can see here moving forward, um, this is what Thrive is, is forecasting for every week going forward. So we're still in January, right? So it's still the cooler months. So we're still selling this item. Um, so, and then we're, you can see kind of our safety stock numbers down here. Um, you know, we're still stocking um, this item. But as we move out, I can move out into March and April and May. Now our forecast is starting to come down, right? Um, because remember this, we don't sell this item too much in the, in the warmer months. And then similarly, our safety stock is also coming down. Um, so then as we go into the warm months, well, now we're not stocking it at all, right? So because in June and July, we really don't, we don't sell it. So, um, but, you know, based on the lead time, you know, here we're starting to build back up again, going into August, because in August, you know, we do historically sell, start selling this item. So that's kind of how Thrive plans um, for a seasonal item. Um, we automatically identify this item as seasonal. We forecast it with the seasonal forecast. Um, and then we're, we're buying um, uh, based on that seasonal pattern. Excuse me, Rick? Yes. John, John Carson has a question. He says he's curious if the, item, if, if the item is seasonal, but the season changes slightly from year to year, i.e. season starts one month early one year and then one month later the next. Yes. Yeah, that's a great question. So um, what we do is is for the seasonal items, um, we actually have a seasonal indice um, for every month. So those can be shifted, these can be adjusted, right? So if, if, if cold hits earlier um, this year, um, or if hot hits earlier this year, um, and, and, and we need to move it up, we can. So if we wanted to like, for example, move it up into July, then we could start moving some of these numbers up and, and we can do that, you know, even it, it, it's held at the SKU location level, but we can do that um, across categories, you know, across vendors, um, you know, you can do it by group um, just one time and then change that seasonal profile um, for that. And then you can make it, if it starts earlier, then you can make it end earlier too, if you wanted to. So um, that's how we handle that. Um, any, any other questions, Gloria? Not at this moment. I'll keep an eye on them. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So, um, number six. Um, so of course this is a, uh, another way where you can stock out, right? So, um, you run promotion, you run a circular, um, and then, um, uh, you know, that can, that can cause you sell a lot more than, than uh, you, what you normally do. And if you're not on top of it, um, you know, obviously you, you can stock out. So let me show you in Thrive. Um, so this is another demo data set. Um, this actually has um, wine and spirits um, data in it. So let's look at, um, let's look at, last month's promo items. So the way that, that we do it in Thrive is that if you know that you're, um, you know, you're, you've got some stuff on promo coming up, um, you know, however you do it, you know, uh, then you can, if you can give that to us in a spreadsheet, um, you can actually upload it into the, the Thrive system. You can load it right through the app. Um, so, um, you know, so I could go ahead and upload, um, my, my monthly promotions, um, in advance. So these are the ones, let's say that are going to go on promo in June. Um, so now we're looking at the data and, um, let's see, you know, from the stuff that were, was on promo last month, um, 
what, uh, how did it, how did it look? So we had bullet bour bourbon on promotion last month. Um, so let's take a look at that. So this is what Thrive does. So there's a forecast, right? So that's anticipated demand. Um, here's your actual sales. Um, we know that this item was on promo. So we estimate that that's the lift that you had. And so what we can do is we can set the Thrive system then to include that promotional demand or not include it. Um, if this is a you know promotion that we run, you know this was March, but if we'd run this every March, then we'd want to include it. Um, if it was just a one-time thing, then we can say, you know, I understand the sales for seven, um, but that was because it was on promo. I don't want to have that in my demand for, for next year. So then it could be filtered out. So that's, um, you know, how we help you with the, the promotions. Um, number seven, um, you know, if you're not taking lead time volatility, into account adequately. Um, so obviously, you know, you're planning for um, the inventory to get here from your vendor in 30 days, and, and for whatever reason, it takes them 45 days to get there, um, then you can stock out, right? So if you're not doing this already, um, you know, you should track your actual lead times for each item, and you should, you know, be, you should know what that uh, volatility looks like. So in the Thrive system, um, let's take a look at that. So here's the, you know, here's the recent POs for this particular item. You know, I know, um, and we can actually track both vendor POs as well as transfer orders as well. Um, so, and then, you know, we're not using the transfer orders for lead time calculations, um, just the ones from the, from the primary vendor. Um, but, you know, I can tell it, you know, how many of the last purchase orders do I want to take into consideration, you know, or how many months. Um, so I can see that here, the plan lead time is 11. Um, I've had a, a low lead time of seven, a high of 85. So my lead time deviation is 22 days. Um, and then we can take that into account um, in terms of the, the safety stock um, that we carry. And then we can also provide reporting um, back in terms of your vendor performance um, that some of our clients use uh, for negotiation purposes with your vendors. Um, you know, obviously, if you've got a vendor that's very unreliable in terms of their lead time performance, they're, they're costing you money. You know, you're either having to stock more um, because you don't know when they're, when they're going to get there um, or they're causing you to lose sales. Um, so we, we actually can provide you with reporting back there as to, um, uh, you know, for your vendors and, and how they're doing in terms of lead time performance. All right, so the final one then is when you're out. If you have, um, if you're a multi-location wholesaler and then you've got um, DCs or, or big branches um, that, you know, where you bring your inventory in from, from, you know, a lot of your vendors and then you transfer it around from there, um, you know, once you're out at the, at the hub, um, then, you know, obviously that's, that's going to cause problems because then, um, um, you're going to start potentially running out at the branches. So that, that, um, actually increases your, your out of stocks, um, you know, by the number of locations that are then running out. So, um, you know, what your system, your buying system should do is it, you know, in addition to predicting accurately, um, what you're selling at each location, um, you know, it should, you know, in this particular case, we're selling at the hub. So we sell out of the hub so I can see, um, you know, there's a forecast in place there, but then there's also um, baby branches um, that are, that are pulling that, that, uh, that we transfer to um, from the hub. So I can look and see what we call dependent demand. Um, I can see what that looks like too. Um, and so what we do is then we roll up the um, uh, we roll up the demand from the uh, for the, the requirements from the baby branches, um, and then we you know we roll that up to the hub, and then we combine that with the um, with the hub's uh, own independent sales. Um, and so you can see here, there's actually you know five branches that pull out of this hub. 
And so, um, uh, you know, here's the various quantities that we're going to have to fill for them in addition to the, the, you know, the independent sales that we sell out of the hub. So, you know, it's called a variety of things, you know, it can be called multi-echelon uh, planning, but, but this is the way that you can uh, help prevent running out of the DC if it's, if it's aware of all of its distribution network requirements and, and is if, uh, you know, buying for them appropriately. So um, that's pretty much it on the reasons. Like I said, I, di I didn't go into any of them in great detail. Um, what I'm happy to do if you guys have questions, um, you know, I can do, I wanted to do a little plug for us at the end here. So this is about us. Um, this is what we do, inventory optimization. We focus, um, you know, exclusively on wholesale and master dis distribution. Um, and then we've been recognized in the marketplace. Um, uh, a lot of these awards that we've won have, have been from nominations from our clients, uh, which we're proud of. Um, we do, as I showed you um, briefly, you know, we do monitor all the eight reasons for stockouts. Um, so we're able to typically reduce our clients' lost sales by at least 50%. Um, so, you know, and just to put that into numbers for you, so if, if um, you know, if a typical distributor loses 6% of, of annual sales, um, uh, you know, due to, to uh, lost sales due to out of stocks, you know, for a hundred million distributor, that's uh, six million bucks. Um, so if we can cut that in half, we're we're adding um, three million dollars. Um, you know, we're kind of um, adding that back to the to the top line. Then, so um, you know, and that's been our experience is that we're able to reduce lost sales by fifty percent or more at um, plum. You know, the plumbing. Plumbing and HVAC wholesalers like Williams Distributing and PDI and um, Plumbing PVF Master Distributors, Matco, Norco, Webson, LDR. Um, so just some, some examples here. Um, and then we do interface to pretty much all of the primary ERP systems used by distribution companies, including, um, you know, you guys, uh, SX and, and, and FAX. So I wanted to provide you with my contact information. Um, I, you know, and at this time too, um, uh, if, if there are additional questions, um, I'd be happy to, um, to answer those now. Um, or if you want, you know, you, you know, feel free to take down my contact information um, and then you can you know, feel free to reach out to me directly. And, and then we can um, talk about your particular issues or, and or we can schedule a, a you know, uh, a private web demo um, specifically, you know, in regards to what your company looks like and the challenges that you might be facing. Rick, we seem to be all clear on questions at this time. Okay, great. Um, yeah, so I would say, um, you know, for any of you that have any interest in, in discussing this further, um, please feel free to reach out to me and, uh, and I'd be happy to, uh, um, see what we can do to help. Thank you so much, Rick. And as they say in show business, that's a wrap. Thank you, everyone. Have a good day.